Today, we're gonna to talk about how standard TRT is wrong. Hi, my name is John Jaquish. I'm a doctor of biomedical engineering, which gives me a unique perspective on all things human physiology, nutrition, sometimes pharmaceuticals and hormones. I'm gonna talk a little bit about some different stuff than you would normally hear from the typical fitness influencer. Today, we're gonna to talk about how standard TRT, which means testosterone replacement therapy, is wrong. It's the way it's prescribed, the way it's administered, the medications used, all incorrect. And you're gonna understand by the end of this video why and what to do about it. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you an infographic, which I have created, and I'm gonna go over the different elements of this infographic and I'll put them on screen so you can see them. So when you look at this, you will notice towards the bottom, now this is testosterone over a 24 hour period in a number of different individuals in a number of different scenarios. Now you will see the first line we're gonna talk about is in gray and it's towards the bottom and it sort of tracks the green line. So that what you see in gray is somebody with normal testosterone later in life, maybe in their 30s or 40s, so they're only up at around 600 nanograms to the deciliter at peak. But that peak is only an hour or two or three after they wake up, which normally is when your testosterone is supposed to be high. So you wake up, your testosterone starts climbing two or three hours, then it drops back down. So the idea that when your TRT physician and your endocrinologist tells you you need to go do blood work to understand where your testosterone level is at, it's funny because they don't tell you what time to test it. If you get it tested in the morning, you're gonna show higher. If you get it tested later in the day, it's gonna show lower. And individuals should really do multiple tests to figure this out, but. Of course, having you go back a couple of times to a blood lab is just not convenient or anything anybody wants to do, so physicians don't do that. Also, they don't really know what I'm talking about because this, this is a very different understanding, which brings us to the second line I want you to pay attention to, which is the red one. Now, this is standard TRT. The red line is standard TRT at the beginning of the week. The purple line is standard TRT towards the end of the week, which means it drops down. Now, this scale is over a 24 hour period. So within different days, the level stays high uh, and, it, and it drops down to whatever, whatever level it is. It gets, it gets considerably lower if somebody is doing a once a week shot. Now, the mentality for testosterone replacement in the past has always been we want to keep levels high on a 24 hour basis. This is the problem. It's not supposed to be that way. Your body only has it high in the mornings and then it's low at night. So the question I began to ask, this was a few years ago, maybe the only reason we have side effects to taking exogenous tes testosterone is because we have testosterone high at night. Now, you'll also notice this sort of dark circle at the end of the infographic. This represents nighttime, and more, more specifically, when at night, when testosterone is high, this is where the side effects come from because your body sees you have high testosterone at nighttime. Well, that's a problem. So you start converting to estrogen you start upregulating SHBG, which stands for sex hormone binding globulin. Sex hormone meaning testosterone, binding meaning it grabs a hold of the testosterone and keeps it from attaching to a receptor site. So it's not, it's not that SHBG is bad, but SHBG is the body's mechanism to get rid of testosterone when you have too much. So when people get on TRT, they start upregulating SHBG and after about 60 days, you'll notice your TRT isn't working like it was the first couple of weeks. Now, 
the reason steroid users do cycles and you'll see this all over the internet when if you follow or try to learn about how people do that the reason they do that is to avoid shbg and what they'll do is they'll have a certain dose and after two months they'll bump the dose up because they're trying they're always trying to keep the body from catching up with the shbg over time so they'll they'll do a certain amount and then they'll up that that certain amount and then they cycle completely off now this is associated with all sorts of horrible emotional side effects uh horrible physical side effects i've said this in many many videos it's not worth it but that's the shit they have to go through to get these high levels of hormones in their system and get the results, they have to deal with all these side effects. Totally not worth it. Also, there are some longer term side effects, cardiac side effects. And a lot of those are nuanced because they're sometimes it's if somebody takes anabolic drugs and then uh, has a really poor diet, well, man, they're really compounding their problems. So I am against that. However, I do want to point out that this blue line that I put on the infographic is represent re representing one of the only clinical trials that was ever done with a steroid level cycle because testosterone replacement therapies typically you're prescribed maybe 150 milligrams a week whereas this particular steroid cycle that was studied and this was from the new england journal of medicine this was 600 milligrams a week uh in you know considerably higher also trt the trt that was that was in the study that I put on here was 200 milligrams per week. So you see with 600, this, this, this individual's at 3,200 nanograms to the deciliter. That's when you're on cycle. Now, when you do a cycle, you have to take an equal amount of time off of the cycle. So this is, let's say they're going as hard as they can as ster some steroid users do. That means half the year they're at this level and then the other half of the year, they're basically just crashed and feeling absolutely miserable but it's important to point out their their level and the associated gains that they get from that now this is really important the two elements on this infographic first the green line this is the suspended in castor oil pill so it's a pill with testosterone under canawit suspended in castor oil and you take these pills and you have to eat fats with them and there's there's a couple that are out there on the market when you do this you can have a sort of daily dose of testosterone now the protocol that these guys tend to use is a dose twice per day which does not make much sense because you would want to you would want it all up front at the beginning of the day to avoid the side effects. So the way they have dosed it, it's seeming, seemingly to stick with this mentality that you want high testosterone all throughout the day and you absolutely do not. So that's a huge mistake. Uh, now people can dose it all at once up front in the morning, but that's typically not how the physician is telling you how to do that. And I don't know, maybe someday they'll wake up but what they're telling you is wrong. Now, the most important thing on this infographic is obviously the orange line. So this is fast acting testosterone. What was particularly in, on this test was uh, what's called Nandrogen, and that's being launched uh, as we speak uh, on a website called oralonly.com. Now, when you use this testosterone, it's very fast acting. Now what ends up happening is you squirt this gel under your tongue and you hold it there for about 90 seconds and in that 90 seconds it permeates the mucous membrane underneath your tongue and gets into the bloodstream now this is unesterified testosterone because somebody will ask that question so that means it's basically like an iv of testosterone so the testosterone finds the receptor sites and then goes down really amazing part about this is it actually drives your shbg down not up so for example 
my SHBG is 8.9 nanograms to the deciliter. Normal is 40. Now I've seen some people with 120. If you have 120 SHBG, you're probably not able to build much muscle because your SHBG is attaching to the testosterone and nullifying it, basically making it worthless. So that line right there, that's what you get with fast acting testosterone. Now Nandrogen is not the only approach. You could do daily injections of testosterone suspension. I did a TED talk where I referenced that and I won't go into the details, but injecting testosterone suspension, it crystallizes when it's suspended. So it's sort of like injecting shards of broken glass, very painful and you gotta do it every day. So uh, while I don't recommend that, that is a way to use fast acting testosterone. But Nandrogen, which I was part of the creation of that product, it hits all the objectives where we want a high level of testosterone when the body naturally has you having a high level of testosterone. And then it drops off back to a normal level of testosterone. So you avoid ever upregulating SHBG. And this is the important part. This means that your TRT will give you gains every day, unlike regular TRT, which basically stops working after 60 days. And you don't want to cycle it because you don't want to run into the problems that a steroid user runs into. And why would you? Because you're at a replacement dosage, which is supposed to be at a level where you're not triggering the side effects, but that, that doesn't happen. And if you wanted to have a sort of sustained low level of testosterone, then you basically get nothing. So that's not very exciting and not really worth the trouble. So fast acting testosterone, this is the thing. Now I'm going to give you what I believe to be true, but has not been tested. And I don't know how we would test it in a clinical environment, but some bodybuilders will no doubt, use more than the 15 milligrams. So by the way, that orange line, 15 milligrams a day is what it took to get that line there. That's, uh, if you total that up, 15 milligrams times seven, so seven days in a week, that's 105 milligrams. Well, the standard TRT dose is more like 150. So that's actually less than a standard TRT dose and you have massively more testosterone attaching to receptor sites by using the fast acting. So if somebody were to have maybe a more normal dosage, maybe 20 milligrams a day, they would do even better than this. But the, the point is it doesn't stop working like standard TRT and like a steroid cycle. So it's almost like you're doing a cycle for two hours every day. And then the rest of the hours of the day, the body's just functioning normally. When you use testosterone like this, you do not suppress your natural testosterone. You do not shut down your natural testicular function. You do not upregulate SHBG. In fact, you drive it down. You do not have high levels of conversion to estradiol. That, that one may be different depending on the person. Uh, I've had about 100 people taking this over the last year. And we've seen a little bit of estradiol effects, but nothing near where, like the normal TRT conversion. Uh, and also no hematocrit issues, the thickening of the blood. It's just not seen. So really most of the side effects are gone and you can grow in perpetuity. So not the same growth as like the steroid cycle guys, but you have growth that doesn't stop, which is unlike the steroid cycle guys. And it's also unlike the people who take testosterone replacement therapy. This I'm predicting, this is the way that TRT is going to be in the future. And uh, I recommend you go to oralonly.com and learn more. Thanks. If you want to argue with me in the comments and tell me I'm wrong, that's cool. Uh, I will address your concerns there. Thanks. See you on the next one. If this video helped you, I want you to subscribe and follow. I'm going to put out videos on a regular basis. I think they're going to help a whole lot of people, especially if you're one of those people that doesn't just instantly grow from lifting regular weights. We've got the answer for you.